channel guys in today's video I'm going to be putting basically body panels and an arrow kit on the cross guard making it look nice and as well as installing this lights kit from Oxbeam. So a lot of this stuff is actually really small and low profile which is what I wanted and then we have these mirrors with integrated turn signals as well as this light bar. So really nice stuff that's going to go on a cross guard. So I'm not sure how much progress we'll get done in this video but I definitely want to cover everything with aluminum body panels. I also want to slap a big wing on this thing just for the street cred. Uh, the carbon fiber one I have, I think it's going to give this thing a really mean and aggressive look. So I guess we're going to go ahead and just start off with these turn signals, make some brackets, and then just start mounting this stuff to the cross guard. But yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into the build. placement of the mirrors so I'm gonna go ahead and weld them in. guys check this out dang that is that is pretty bright all right guys so I'm gonna remove those dinky snowmobile shocks and put on a set of these nice Fox racing shocks I am gonna have to cut this mount off and redo it as well as the bottom one but uh I will be making it way nicer. All right guys, so I got these lower shock mounts plasma cut by a friend. Should allow for adjustable suspension. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld them on. All right guys, so that is the low setting on the front suspension. Let me go ahead and show you what the high setting looks like. That is the high suspension lift. It did actually lift it quite a bit. I think it's around six to seven inches, which is really good. So uh, yeah guys, we're gonna go ahead and weld the strut towers up and then start working on the hood. Alright guys, so I got a piece of cardboard here for my hood. I'm trying to get just the basic shape and see, you know, what looks best because this is really going to be my time to shine and make this thing look aggressive. Now, I really wish I had a louver tool to punch out some louvers, louvers. I don't know, I was thinking about just gluing this to the, to the hood, but I don't know. I'm really not sure yet what I'm going to do. Um, I have very little sheet metal forming tools, so... The only thing I have is just a swag off-road press brake, and that's it. Um. All right, guys, it's the next day here. We're going to head over to Fisher Steel and grab some aluminum for the front cowl and the body panels. We're also going to stop by Harbor Freight and grab me a metal brake. Uh, that way I can bend the metal and not have to weld it. So I'll see you there. Hey, what's up, bro? What up, Vasily? What do you need, man? I'm looking for some aluminum sheet metal. 
like uh, uh, like one sixteenth maybe. Like an O sixty three. Let me actually go look and uh, make sure that y'all have what I want. Go right at it. All right. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you next time. All right, brother. Better see me. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So this is the sheet aluminum I've got. Aluminum has actually almost doubled and tripled in price since two years ago. So this sheet costs like $175, and it's it's pretty thin. So I do not want to mess this thing up. Alright guys, so I purchased a heavy duty $300 metal brake from Harbor Freight and I was just playing around with it and guys, I do not like it. It's very finicky and I think I'm actually pushing it over its capacity with this one. Uh, this is 063 aluminum. I'm just going to go ahead and heat it up so it bends smoothly um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, it, it will work. I am pushing it over its capacity. Okay guys, it is not liking it, but we're almost there, we're almost there. Well guys, um, I missed, as you can see, dang it, but I guess I'll see what I can do. I'm going to finish bending this side out, and then what I could do is just bend it along this side, and it'll pick that up. Um, I don't know if it's, if that's going to work, but we'll give it a shot. All right, guys, so I got the other side bent. It did turn out a lot better because uh, I called my dad in and we just bent it. And with two people, it definitely goes on a lot easier. So I did give myself a lot of material to cut off for excess. I just got my strut, strut towers just cut roughly. Um, I also did mess up on those too. I should have used cardboard. So what I'm going to do is make a new bend right here. And that way I can get those flaps to go up and close that gap. I think I'm just going to weld that in and then I'm going to have to do some welding up here, uh, which is not that big of a deal. Alright guys, so I got this area filled in, welded and sanded, um, although it's not perfect, I think what I'll do is just bedline every single body panel on here uh, because this is my first time doing something like this and we definitely won't be able to get it perfect. Alright guys, so you get the proof of concept with the cowl. This thing looks like a freaking cyber truck, which is just sick, but guys, aluminum is pretty tedious to work on. so. I'm going to finish the rest of the body panels in part two of this build. Um, it's going to take a whole week to finish it. And then let me show you what I'm doing with the rear brake. So the wing is going to be mounted off some tubing. It's going to be more like this. And then uh, for the taillight, I'm going to use basically a slim LED and just basically conceal it under the wing. I figure that's the best way to do it. So like I said, I am going to be street legal this thing through dirtlegal.com. We already started the process. For those of you that actually want to get your bill street legal, it is going to cost anywhere between $700 to $1,200, depending on not if it has a VIN number. If it has a VIN number on it, then it's going to be a whole lot easier, but they can get you taken care of uh, for the right price. So I'm going to be going into more depth about the process uh, once it's all said and done and just uh, make it look neat so yeah guys to catch you in the next one stay tuned peace god bless <music>